I tried to do some research, but really the best I could find is that prosit is just an old, outdated form of the word prost. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kelly again, and welcome back to my channel. If you follow me on Instagram, then you probably already know that I am a big fan of beer. I love to drink beer, and I even used to brew my own beer. So throughout the years, I've grown to become very familiar with a lot of different types of beer. When I started to learn German, I had no idea just how useful my knowledge of beer would prove to be. Now, it's not like I took one sip of German beer and suddenly I was fluent, but I appreciate the foundation of German vocabulary I gained just from being a beer enthusiast. Can't promise I can pronounce it all correctly, but at least I'm familiar with the words. So for today's video, I'm gonna crack open a beer, even though it's only eight in the morning, and share with you the German I know from beer. Oh yeah, a good breakfast beer. Now I've got an awesome lineup of beers to show you guys, ranging from German imports to local microbrews, and I bought every single one of them in the immediate DC area. I think you're gonna be really surprised to see not only how many German beers you can buy in the US, but also how many references there are to Germany, German culture, and German style beers among our beers brewed here in the US. really hits the spot this early in the morning. All right, first, let's start out with colors and shades. I know dunkel beers to be dark beers, and of course, that's exactly what the German word dunkel means. This is a dunkel that's brewed by Eyinger Brewery, located in Bavaria, Germany, close to Munich. Since this beer was brewed for export to the US, you'll see both German and English on the label. So up at the top here, it says Authentic Bavarian Dark, but on the main label, it says Alt Bayerisch Dunkel. Alt meaning old, Bayerisch is an older spelling of the German word for Bavarian, and of course, Dunkel means dark. Now this is an American beer named Beer Wolf Dunkelweizen, and it's brewed by Great Lakes Brewing Company out of Cleveland, Ohio. Ohio has a fair amount of German heritage, and so while Great Lakes Brewing Company is actually owned by two Irish brothers, this beer and a few of their others pays homage to Cleveland's connection with Germany. On the label, you'll notice that beer in Beer Wolf is spelled the German way, and it's a Dunkelweizen, and Weizen means wheat in German. So this label actually offers three different German words. And I'll also add that regarding the artwork on the label, Great Lakes Brewing Company described it as a Bavarian-inspired scene featuring the different special ingredients found in this particular brew. The next shade, which is quite opposite of Dunkel, is Helles. And I know that whenever I see a beer with the word Helles in the name, or it's described as a Helles, that it means the beer is going to be paler in color. And that's because the German word Helles translates to bright in English. And the first Helles beer that I have to show you guys is called the Dogs of Helles, and it's brewed by the Laughing Dog Brewing Company out of Idaho. The name is a play on the 1982 horror film Dogs of Hell, which doesn't really have much to do with the label or the beer itself, but was a clever way for the company to be able to express that it's a Hellas and also include dog in the name to pay homage to their Laughing Dog Brewing Company brand. And you'll notice that on the label, it says German style Hellas Lager. I'll talk about the word Lager a little later in the video. The next Hellas that I wanna show you guys is called Rue Keller Hellas, and it's brewed by the brewery out of Orange County, California. I got this beer to show you guys because not only does it have Helles in the name, but also because it has the German word Keller in the name, which I'll tell you about later. Now, Rue isn't German. Rue is actually the last name of the brewery's founder, Patrick Rue, which is also why brewery is spelled this way. The next color I learned from drinking beer is Schwartz. And similar to Dunkel, I knew that if I ordered a Schwartz beer, I was going to get a very dark beer. In German, Schwartz means black, and you can see on this label that Schwartz beer is very clearly translated to black lager beer, again, because it was brewed for export to the US. 
And the last color, if you can call it a color, is featured on this German Kristall Weissbier, brewed by Weinstefana. In German, Kristall means crystal. Something that did confuse me about this beer, though, is that here you see it's called a Weiss beer, and Weiss means white in German. But in this context, I understand it to mean wheat, and that this is a wheat beer. But my German isn't good enough to understand why they chose to use the word Weiss instead of Weizen. So if you know the answer, please put it in the comments below. Before I go on to the next category of German vocabulary, I wanted to show you guys two very German-inspired beers that I came across during my shopping that I thought you'd be interested to see. This is a beer brewed by Rocket Frog Brewing Company, which is located in Virginia, just about 40 miles outside of DC. This beer is called Rheinwasser. Rhine, as you see it on the label, is the English spelling for the Rhine, which is a very prominent river in Germany. And then Wasser is the German word for water. I found it interesting that they made the compound word half English and half German. Also on the label, you see their branded frog head with the German flag colors in the background. And behind the frog, you see a depiction of the city Cologne, or in German, Köln, which is one of the cities the Rhine runs through. The image of the city is superimposed on a very faded close-up photo of the Köln Cathedral, which is very famous and arguably the most recognizable landmark of this city. This beer is, of course, a Kölsch, which originates from the city of Köln. The other beer I wanted to share with you guys also pays homage to a German city, but this time it's Berlin, or in German, Berlin. This is a Berliner Weisse brewed by Strange Ways Brewing out of Richmond, Virginia, and it is called Überlin. And you might recognize the name of this beer if you're a big fan of the band R.E.M. because it's named after a single they put out in 2011. Given that the song is about someone who's strange to a new city, it makes sense why the founder of Strange Ways Brewing would choose this name for his Berliner Weisse brew. Überlin is a sort of combination of the German word Uber and the city name of Berlin. The label features all of the iconic Berlin landmarks such as the TV Tower, the Brandenburg Gate, and the Victory Column. Also, in the sky, you see the Hindenburg passenger airship. On the back, it says, Change Will Save You, which is a lyric from the song Überlin, and the label also states, the origin of this sour wheat beer style dates back to the 16th century in the region of northern Germany in and around Berlin. Dubbed the Champagne of the North by Napoleon's troops, this thirst-quenching beer was brewed by Frederick the Great himself. And for the beer's description on their website, the brewery added that it can be enjoyed as is, or, if adventurous, inject a blast of flavor by allowing the addition of traditional flavored syrups, such as Himbeer syrup, raspberry, or Waldmeister syrup, sweet woodruff made from wild baby's breath. I actually really love a good Berliner Weisse with Woodruff or raspberry syrup, but this style of beer is not that common in the US, so needless to say, I'm very excited that I was able to find it. Okay, next up, I'm going to talk to you about months. Now these are fairly easy because most of them are very familiar to their English translation. These beers aren't so much a type of beer as they are seasonal, and of course the first one I have to talk to you about is Oktoberfest. You would be hard pressed to find an American who's never heard of Oktoberfest, even if they've never been to Germany, because it is the world's most famous beer fest, and several countries, including the US, host their own Oktoberfest celebrations because who doesn't love an excuse to drink a bunch of beer with their friends at a fest? And with October right there in the name, it's very easy to surmise that this is the German word for our English October. I didn't think I'd be able to find any Oktoberfest beer because again, it should be seasonal and it's only May, but somehow I managed to get a hold of this Oktoberfest beer by Erdinger, which is a German brewery. And also this beer crate from Sierra Nevada, which is a California-based brewery, and they brew this Oktoberfest beer in partnership with Bitburger, which is a German brewery. And then Hofbrau brews this Maibach in the spring, and again, it's easy to gather that Mai is the German word for the month of May. Hofbrau beers are actually pretty commonly found here in the US, especially at any sort of restaurant that sells German food. 
Now this is a Märzen beer, and Märzen is the German word for the month of March. If a beer is a Märzen, then I understand that it has to be brewed between the months of October and April. This beer is also a Rauch beer. Rauch is the German word for smoke, and so this is a smoke beer, which means exactly what you can assume, that the brewing process gives this beer a smoky flavor. So that's it for months, but before I move on to the next category, I wanted to share with you two more American beers I came across with German references. So about five to 10 years ago, the gluten-free food scene exploded, and now we can even drink gluten-free beer. There's a brewery in Canada that specializes specifically in brewing gluten-free beer. They named their brewery Glutenberg, and while it really has nothing to do with German Johannes Gutenberg, the father of the printing press, it really makes for a fun name that I wanted to share with you guys. And this is a beer named Light of Cologne, brewed by Ornery Beer Company out of Manassas, Virginia. Light of Cologne is, of course, a Kirsch, and it's named in honor of the Kühner Lichter, which is Germany's biggest display of fireworks with synchronized music held every summer. Except, sadly, not this summer. And one cute detail on this label I want to point out to you guys is this little character that's in the shape of a Hoff wearing lederhosen and holding a firework. Okay, next category is places. This is a Weiss beer brewed by Ondex Monastery Brewery in Bavaria, Germany. On the label you see a drawing of the monastery, which I learned to understand was the German word Kloster. Also, because I'm used to seeing dates on labels or stores paired with the word since, I learned that Zeit means since from drinking this beer. And this right here, I understand means pleasure for body and soul, but I didn't, I didn't know that before I started actually learning German. I actually learned that quite recently. <laughs> And this is another beer brewed by Great Lakes Brewing Company called Dortmunder Gold Lager, named of course after the city Dortmund. I know I'm butchering that name, cut me a break guys. And Lager is actually German for warehouse or storage. This is a beer brewed by Port City Brewing Company in Alexandria, Virginia, which is just across the river from me in DC. The beer is called Franconian Keller Beer. Franconia is a region of Germany which includes Nuremberg, and Keller in Kellerbier translates to cellar or basement. And Kellerbier is its own type of beer which is also a lager. I love the artwork of this label because it features a half-timbered building which you can find all over Germany and I just think they're really quite charming. Port City, by the way, also has a Schwartz beer. Alright, that's it for places. Now we're going to talk about adjectives. This is a German Altbier, and Alt means old in German. I think I mentioned that a little earlier in the video. This is a Doppelbach, and Doppel is another German word that I became familiar with just from drinking beer. Doppel, of course, means double. And up at the top here, you'll see that it says Dunkel's Stark Beer. Stark means strong in German. So this means that the beer is a strong, dark beer. And this is an Eisbach. Ice in German means ice in English. And you're probably thinking, Kelly, ice is not an adjective. And you'd be right. But I put it into this category because in this context, it's used to describe the brewing process of this beer. It's made by freezing a Doppelbach, and then the ice is removed, which leaves behind a much stronger, more concentrated beer. Supposedly, as legend has it, this was first done by mistake, but has since been done purposely to achieve this style of beer. The rest of the beers I have to show you guys don't fit neatly into categories, so it's going to be a bit random. If you've ever been to Texas, then surely you would have come across this famous Texas beer, Shinerbach. Shinerbach is produced by Spotzel Brewery in Shiner, Texas, which was founded by a man born in Bavaria named Cosmo Spotzel, who eventually moved to Texas and opened up this brewery in 1909. I've been throwing around the word Bach a lot in this video and have yet to address it because I was saving it for Shinerbach. Bach in German means goat or ram, but as I understand it, Bach beers don't really have a tie to this usage of the word Bach, but I often see a ram depicted with the word Bach, just like you see here on this beer label. 
Also on the bottom of this can is the word prosit, which always confused me because I knew the word to be post. I tried to do some research, but really the best I could find is that prosit is just an old, outdated form of the word prost. So if you have a different or better answer, please let me know in the comments below. The next two beers I want to talk about are both Hefeweizens. This one is brewed by DC Brau, which is a local DC brewery, with German right there in the company name, as Brau means brew in German. The interesting thing though about this Hefeweizen is that it's described as a German style wheat beer, but the name of it is El Hefe Speaks, and while Hefe translates to yeast in German, putting the L in front of it, and given the context of the verb speaks, DC Brau chose to use a Spanish translation of El Jefe, which in Spanish means the boss. And the second Hefeweizen is brewed again by Great Lakes Brewing Company. Guys, I swear I'm not sponsored by them. They just happen to have quite a few beers with German references. And I wanted to share this one with you guys because of the artwork on the label. Great Lakes brewed their Hefeweizen with lemon, and so you see a cartoon lemon featured on the label sporting Lederhosen and a Tyrolin hat. Guys, there was no way I was going to pronounce Tyrolin right. Hefe is written on his front, and he has a classic mustache. In his hands, he's holding a moss of beer and a bunch of wheat, which is in no doubt referencing the Weizen, especially since when you look at the label from left to right, the word Hefe is followed by the Weizen. The next beer is a lager brewed by Spaten in Munich, Germany, and Spaten means spade, which I was able to surmise pretty easily based on the logo being a spade. And lastly, and also tragically, I wanted to share with you guys that there is already a beer being made with a name deriving from the current healthcare crisis. Hysteria Brewing Company out of Maryland started producing a Kolsch that is named European Travel Ban, which of course, References the travel ban our president placed on Europeans on March 11th. The label features characters wearing very stereotypical Bavarian clothing, one of whom looks really quite sad. And while my boyfriend is not at all from Bavaria, that guy's face pretty much sums up his emotions and mine when that announcement was made, because we're living apart from each other right now and really have no idea when he'll be able to come back to the US or for that matter, when I, as an American now living in the hotspot, will be able to go to Germany. So. All right guys, that wraps up my video. That was a lot of words and a lot of beer, and I hope that you had as much fun watching it as I did making it. If you like this video, let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you're not following me on Instagram, go find me at Kelly Does Her Thing. I'm always posting stories on there and I think you'll find it interesting. Thank you so much to my patrons for all the support you've given me. You guys have definitely helped fund this collection of beer that I have gathered over the last couple weeks so I could make this video. So for that, thank you so much and I will see you guys next time. Bye! spend $150 on beer for this video? Yes. Yes, I did.